At 10 this morning, they return for their decisive third and final session. In these now 25 frames, second round matches require, requiring two more for a place in the quarters. And this is the first frame of the morning. Perry 28 points ahead, and it's Willie Thorne and Dennis Taylor keeping an eye on this. See, the normal escape would be off there and into, but look where that other cue ball is. He'd leave the easy pot to the middle pocket. So it's not an option. Well, that was a total miss hit. He was trying to catch that half bob. I think if he was going to play that shot, Willie, maybe he couldn't see enough of the left side cushion to play the one that was near the middle pocket. I can only presume, though, Dennis, is... <laughs> Well, it, it, this is playing the one over the pocket. I can't understand how he could miss that first red by so far. Was he playing the first red to come back behind the black with the white? It was either that or hitting up the other side to go up into the bark area. <laughs> we'll never know unless we ask him. Six. Yeah, he was trying to catch a half ball and run up to the bark area. Just misjudged it. Just watch this shot here. You can open the four reds. Just with one little Seven. nudge. You could have done with just hitting it a little bit harder, but it's made all those four reds available just with that little nudge there. First, I thought it was going to be the start that Joe Perry needed. Got off to a, a very quick lead in this frame and then broke down. I thought he was going to score a few more, and with that mistake, could cost him the frame. These balls are set very, very nicely. 15. I'm not sure if the one at the uh, right of the little triangle, the one that's nearest the black, goes into the left corner. He's got the red to the right corner. He's coming around to have a look at that. Just where he's queuing there. And that's trying to tell us what's available. And as you can see, if he gets it in the right spot, he can pot that. And if he doesn't get it in the right spot, he's got the one to the right corner. Just looking at the angle on the blue, maybe he can't just drop it in and leave the white there. Otherwise, it I've already played that. There's no problem swinging the right round two cushions though with a lot of right hand side. He can still get onto one to the extreme right of the, your picture there. Just have to get into the cue ball enough. <coughs> Mind you, he's hit that miles too hard. And if he's on the red nearest the one is the white is now, he's very lucky. Overrun that by three feet, Dennis, didn't he? Yeah, he, he was a bit reluctant to play the cannon onto the three reds there, which would have opened everything up. He didn't want to risk the cannon. And as you say, he overhit that by quite a way. But he's dropped on this quite comfortably, as you can see there. Oh, hang on a minute. Stephen McGuire, 20. One. Are you a little surprised like I am, Dennis? There's quite a few people out of form in this tournament. I, I think of John Higgins, Graham Dot, Marco Fu. When you consider how many matches they've played, and yet there's other players Eight. that seem to be in great form. Well, it seems to be the players that are coming through the qualifiers and, of course, all the players are getting so much match practice now with so many tournaments to play in. You know, the top players are not safe. The uh, lower-seeded players are coming through and just look at Stephen Hendry, the way he's played, having to 
go back playing in qualifiers and now back playing as well as I've ever seen him play. bit surprised at John Higgins. I just don't know what's happened to John. He's, he hasn't been playing at all in his match against Stephen, although Stephen has been excellent. Do you think it's a, too much of an advantage having the qualified, the final qualified match just a week before the venue? No, I think they've, they've got a, a busy schedule anyway. It's, when you get here to the Crucible anyway, it's, it's, it's an even playing field. But it does help the player coming through that's qualified. I think he can still cut the pink in. Could have finished a little better than this. Just about the only kiss that was no good, was it? You'd have, you'd have thought playing it the way it did is sure to be on the pink and almost guaranteed to be on the black as well. Let's put the black safe and as Dennis just mentioned, the, the pink is cuttable but very, very thin. Look at that shot. You thought he's bound to be on both colours. That's usually the case when you're struggling a little bit. Uh, they run a little awkward when you're playing well. They all finish up in perfect positions. That was about the best he could do from that angle. 15. Yeah, good shot 16. that. Good shot that. Perfect angle to bring both reds into play. Only a couple of moments ago, it was a suggestion that Stephen Maguire had a great chance to win the opening frame. Now mm -hmm. Joe's got his second chance in this frame. He needs to make this one pay. Already leads by 30 points. 23. Unfortunately, if he, if he only takes a pink off the next last red, Stephen Maguire still be at a tie. He'd ideally like to play the black, but he can't do that, so I imagine two blues will be okay. They can get very close to those two reds, potting the blue or the pink. 28. I think I'd rather take the pink here. Because he's 29. definitely got to get a red now. <laughs> if he had a, taken the pink, Stephen Maguire would only have been able to tie so he must get on one of these two reds. And that'll do nicely. Thank you very much. What oh, an excellent shot that was. There was precious little room to go between the pocket and the green there to play that little cannon. That was an excellent shot. Deserves to win the frame from that one shot. Certified. Which he has done now. Yeah, he judged it to perfection. I don't think you worry too much about Joe missing Perry, the red. Steve Maguire <laughs> just nods to the referee and he concedes his opening frame. That's the best possible start for Joe Perry. He's got one back, but he's still 11 6 behind. Now, middle Saturday at the Crucible is always a very good one to have tickets for, and there was an extra special attraction this morning, not just the action on the table, but just before it, a match of the day here at the Crucible, very rare, when Brian Wright, a snooker fan of 20 years, who actually has a season ticket here, he comes to virtually every session, and uh, his girlfriend, Lisa Dunks, was there as well. Now, a year ago, he met Lisa, and uh, his first date was here at the Crucible, so he thought this would be an appropriate venue, therefore, to ask her a certain question. Not a dry eye in the house. Lisa, I want to share the rest of my life with you. You're amazing. Don't do it. <laughs> You're truly beautiful. You're my best friend. You're my soulmate. And I love you with all my heart. Lisa, will you marry me?
Lisa, we need you to uh, just sit down and meow. Just to fill you in on the story here, ladies and gents. Just jump. I'll hold, I'll hold your hand. Wait there, wait there, wait there. Just to fill you in on this story, we've been so excited about this. They have been snooker fans for many, many years. They met as friends in 2005. They had their first clinch a year ago on Wednesday at the Crucible. He's been walking around backstage like a cat on a hot tin roof. <laughs> Brian, do the business. Oh, I'm not sure what the rules are about uh, clinches on the on the crucible floor. Congratulations to Brian and Lisa. Absolutely lovely moment. Uh, as you saw there, Brian is a very, very big Coventry fan. And just to sort of put a dampener on his day, they're 2-0 down to Southampton. Sorry about that, Brian. But the important bit all came right. That was a great moment, wasn't it, John? Well, they'll remember that for the rest of their lives. That was very special. But uh, as I say, relegation for Coventry, but at least he's, uh, he's, found, <laughs> he's found happiness somewhere else. Absolutely. <laughs> not quite your style, Stevie. You're much more of a modest sort of chap but nice to see you all the same well the, the, the crucible theater has been the home of many a performance and that was marvelous <laughs> well played and we wish them all the best for their future happiness all right well after that rather pleasant distraction back to the action in the perry Maguire match we saw joe perry take the first of the afternoon of the morning